Hello everyone. Welcome to welcome to another session on cloud computing unit number 5 advanced concepts docker container and kubernetes. In the last session we have discussed about uh, docker what is a container uh, components of docker docker architecture. In this session we will continue with the point of world before docker and virtual machines and world with containers. Let's begin. So this diagram shows us uh, how we used to manage applications without using containers or a virtual machines on a computer. So here this diagram is divided into uh, five layers. The top layer suppose uh, is saying that service for end user. So this will be the layer using which end user of your computer will be able to access your services. There is an application A with version 1, then there is an application B with version 1 and there is an application C version 1. Let us assume that they are, these are different applications that the system user is using for day to day work. The layer 3 uh, is showing different libraries which are required by these applications. So, here is a application uh, A1, uh, library A1 used by application A. Here is a library B which is used by application B as well as application A and there is a library C which is used by application B. There is an independent application C which is use, using some number of libraries. So, this is a standard deployment environment. Uh, so, we deploy or we configure packages, we configure libraries, we re, uh, configure required softwares on the top of the operating system and the application gets uh, services from these libraries, these packages and it in turn provide a service to the end user. Ultimately, uh, these all libraries need to be managed on application uh, on the uh, operating system which on which these uh, applications are running. The issue with this scenario is what if you have a updated version of an application which also needs a new updated version of a library. So, if you compare it with the previous environment here application A and application B both are using a library called as library B and its version 1. However, after certain time period application A's version 2 is launched in the market and you are willing to update to the new version latest version because it have some features that will help you grow your uh, uh, effectiveness your productivity. Uh, the issue be uh, raises because of this is the application A version 2 is required is requiring library B version 2 whereas the older version of application B is still in demand of library B's version 1. Unfortunately, as we are deploying these all packages all libraries on a top of the operating system, it may not be feasible every time to have multiple versions of a single library to be deployed on a computer. It may work, it may not work. It depends on what kind of a library you are planning to use. So, let us assume that uh, it is not possible to have multiple versions of a same library on a single computer and here I have to compromise either I will use library B's version 2 or library B's version 1. I will not be able to deploy both the versions at the same time. What is the cost of this uh, dilemma for me? It ultimately means that either I have to stick to the older version of library uh, app A which is using older version of library B and continue with the older scenario and forget about the update which is available for app A that is first case. Second scenario I have to compromise between application A or application B. I will be able to use either application A or application B but not both at the same time. So, this is a dilemma and this is the world before containers. If you have virtual machines, uh, we have already discussed many applications of virtual machines like you can plan to have a virtual machine 1 and virtual machine 2 and run application A in virtual machine 1 and run application B into the virtual machine 2 and solve this problem. But ultimately they will take a lot of uh, hardware resources, lot of compute resources from your system in turn to satisfy uh, these applications execution at the same time. So, how does how does container will help us in overcoming this limitation? Let us see. So, container as we have studied uh, in the earlier session like container is isolated, independent, 
have all the library's prerequisites inside it, the same win phenomenon will follow. If we create a container of application A, application B and application C, you can simply put all the required libraries inside the container. So, here this uh, first box shows the container of application A and you can see that inside the container you have all the required code of application A alongside the libraries which are required by the application A. So, I have a updated version of library B inside application A's version 2. On the other hand, we have a second container which is completely isolated environment, independent environment and have no relation with the container 1. Let us assume this is container 1, C1 and this is my container 2. So, this both containers are completely independent of each other, have no relation, they are running in isolation. So, ultimately it is possible to have two separate versions of library B inside the containers. So, container 1 C1 will have version 2 of library B whereas, container 2 will continue with the older version of library B as it needs to execute it or support application B. This is how the containers will solve the problem of having multiple versions of a single library in on a computer. What will be the benefit of this? You will be able to deploy multiple applications using different versions of the libraries. If we talk about the limitation, one can say that let us assume the application C also needs a library B, maybe any version, version 1 or version 2. So, what is the limitation of this approach? Even if the application C is in the demand of library B's version 1 or version 2, which is available in the container 1 and container 2, container C or this container C3 again have to put that particular library inside its environment. As they are running in the isolation, they are not able to share these libraries, they must have all the required dependencies, all the required libraries inside the container. So, that is a small limitation of container having a containerized environment that you even if the libraries are available in the uh, containers running on your system, you will not be able to share them. You must have all the libraries inside the container required by your application. But is it a limitation? I guess no, because they are lightweight, they have layers and they importantly satisfy the part of not having any broken dependencies and supporting multiple versions of same libraries inside the applications. As we are having containers, it will also help us in migrating from one machine to the other machine. For example, let us say if I decide to ship this particular application A1 from the environment, let us say this is my uh, uh, development laptop and we plan it to put this particular version machine on the uh, this particular container on the production system, you are not worried about uh, deploying or configuring or installing all the re required libraries on the server environment. For example, uh, if you in the traditional environment, if you really plan to uh, install or run this application or ship this application, let us say this is my environment, uh, old environment, right, world without containers. So, if I plan to install this app A on the new machine, I have to make sure that all the required libraries that is library A, library B must be installed on this new machine, new computer. Once these libraries are installed on the new computer, new machine, new server, then I will be able to start executing application A on that particular server. That dependency is also not there once we start using containers. What you have to do is you have to manage or you have to uh, make sure that the target system have container execution support system like a docker and then just ship the image of this container C1 on the production environment on the server on the target system. As you have a docker or maybe a container management system on the target system, you can directly start executing container 1. All the required libraries, all the required packages are inside the container 1. So, it will start execution of application A seamlessly. You will not have any issues in running the application. This is about having a world with containers. In the next recording, in the next session, we will begin with world with containers and virtual machine alongside the effect of having containers and virtual machine on the development and operational environment. I hope you got these concepts. Thank you.